Mind Your Farm Business on realagriculture.com is brought to you by RBC Royal Bank. Welcome to the Mind Your Farm Business podcast brought to you by RBC Royal Bank. I'm Sean Haney, founder of realagriculture.com and host of Real Ag Radio on Rural Radio 147. You can find more episodes of the Mind Your Farm Business podcast by going to mindyourfarmbusiness.com or downloading the podcast at iTunes. Today's topic on the Mind Your Farm Business podcast is all about managing through the COVID-19 pandemic this spring. Social distancing has forced many people to work from home, but for farmers, this is just not possible. The crop has to get planted and livestock has to be cared for, but precautions still need to be followed. Whether it is your employees or suppliers or customers, it's critical that you understand what you can do to minimize how COVID-19 impacts your farm business and your health. Today, we're going to speak with Jennifer Wright. She's the Senior HR Advisor and Stakeholder Engagement Specialist with the Canadian Agricultural Human Resource Council. Jennifer speaks to agricultural stakeholders across the country on best management practices during COVID-19. Okay, let's get minding our farm business. Hi, Jen. How are you doing today? Uh, Great, Sean. How are you? I'm doing well, doing well. You know, as farmers are about to hit the field, and of course, livestock farmers are hard at it as well, everyone's trying to sort out what COVID-19 means to their operation, what precautions they need to be taking. And I think one of the things that sort of clouds over this decision is the fact that, hey, I'm in a rural area. Do I even need to be concerned? I'm not in New York City. I'm not in Toronto. I'm I'm out here in the middle of nowhere. Do I need to actually be concerned about this on my farm? Yeah, and uh, I know that's a question on everyone's minds. For sure, you do need to be concerned. Um, there's lots of cases of uh, COVID-19 all across the country, including rural areas. And um, although you might be on the farm um, and feel like you're away from crowds and things like that, it doesn't mean that the virus isn't um, in your area. Um, I think there, we've seen examples um, like the northern Saskatchewan snowmobile uh, rally that happened, and uh, there was COVID-19 cases come from that. We've heard lots of cases in other rural areas across Canada, the funerals where one person comes to a funeral and, you know, every, it's a small gathering, but is in, infects everyone attending, different things like that. So no one's immune to it and uh, no region in the country is immune to it either. So what are some of the best management practices that you think farmers should be engaging in then? Uh, really um, looking at what your the public health authorities are advising as far as prevention. Um, That goes to things as simple as hand washing and physical distancing, Um, making sure that you're cleaning your facilities regularly, maybe even more regularly than usual, Um, taking a look at what Health Canada is um, advising as far as hospital grade um, cleaning products as well, and um, really just making sure that you're providing if you have employees on the farm or visitors to the farm that you're ensuring they are provided a work, a safe work environment that adheres to what the public health authorities are advising. Okay. So I think the big question here is what happens during the seeding planting season? It could even be calving. Uh, What happens during the busy season here? If somebody on my team gets sick, uh, maybe not even a positive case, but just gets sick, what do we do? And that's uh, a question that, you know, I think as uh, farmers, as producers, um, you know, you think it's uh, just a bit of a cough or just a bit of a runny nose. And, you know, everyone kind of has always taken the approach that you just work through it, especially when you're looking at a time where, you know, time sensitive, you need to get seeds in the ground or, you know, it's uh, you're calving, whatever it may be. This is not the time to take that approach. So if yourself or one of your employees is sick, you do have to support them to self-isolate. You yourself have to self-isolate and uh, you need to make sure that um, you're reducing the risk to others that may have been around that employee or yourself um, by either advising them to self-isolate or um, ensuring that they um, that the facilities are very well cleaned um, once yourself or the employee is 
out of the environment. You also want to be looking at uh, connecting with your local health authorities, public health authorities, to make sure they are advising you of the most up-to-date regulations and procedures around this as well. So, Jen, if growers are going to follow the protocols to the T and the letter of the law, so to speak, is it? do you think it's a good idea to have more people hired for the season just in case there is uh, some sort of situation where you do have to have an employee or yourself uh, go into isolation? Yeah, that's a really good, uh, a really good point. And, you know, if, um, if you haven't already, you probably, chances are you may have a shortage of staff. So the first thing you really want to be doing if you haven't had a chance to yet is taking a look at, you know, pandemic planning or emergency planning and thinking, okay, what do I do? If um, part of my crew is is sick, one person's sick, how do the roles and responsibilities shift? So understanding who's responsible for what in the best case scenario. And then what does that look like if certain people in that structure, org structure, are not available because they are sick? Um, And then, you know, what does that look like if we just don't have enough staff or aren't able to operate? Hiring more uh, to have a, a... broader uh, labor pool to pull from may be one of those solutions. If you're in a a smaller environment where it might be just yourself and your family, you know, rural environments have always been great at neighbors pitching in and helping out when needed, but this might be the time to talk to your neighbors and reach out and create those plans before you actually get in a situation where you need some help. We're going to get back to my conversation with Jennifer Wright, but first a word from our sponsor. This episode of the Mind Your Farm Business Podcast is brought to you by RBC. In the midst of this global pandemic, producers face a unique set of challenges and risks. The agriculture account managers at RBC are here to help you protect the well-being of your farm, family, and business. Visit rbc.com slash business relief to learn more about the services and support available. What do you think about the strategy I've heard from, I've heard this from a couple farms across the country, is, you know, off out of the gates, like when we can get started with planting, we're going to go full steam it. We are going to go hard. You know, typically you get off to a bit of a slow start. And as you get late, that's when you start to work later hours. But we're going to go fast and hard off the beginning just because we know that time is our enemy, that it's inevitable that somebody on the team may get sick. And so the more we get done in a shorter period of time, the better. What, what do you think about that strategy? Um, that's one way to approach it. Um, and I think that strategy, you know, if you think about the way the weather's gone over the last couple of uh, seasons as well, you know, I think everyone approaches this planting season in their, uh, based on their own experience, uh, historic experience as well. So, you know, there is always that, uh, drive to get things planted as soon as possible, especially when you have a, a healthy, uh, workforce to help get that done. Um, But I think that would be a decision that would have to be made on a case-by-case basis or, you know, within uh, individuals' own operations. I think a lot of times we focus in this situation on bigger teams, right? How do you keep your team safe? How do you keep all your employees safe? I think possibly the, the farm that is the most susceptible here has the highest level of risk of shutdown is, is a solo operator, is, is somebody that does the bulk of the work themselves inside of a small family unit. I, I think that is the kind of operation, like if that one person goes down, there's, there's some real trouble here. Yeah, absolutely. And that's why we've been uh, trying to talk more about that neighborhood plan and not waiting for your neighbors to step in if that happens to you, but having those be, um, having those conversations preemptively or, or now, <laughs> you know, um, because there are so many um, producers that are just in that situation. They're the sole, um, sole producer, the sole worker on the farm, or maybe it's just, you know, a uh, husband, wife team. And, you know, if both are sick, what happens? So it is so important if you're in those situations to not just be heads down, but to be talking to your colleagues, your neighbors, um, people that have similar production as you in your area and really come up with that community plan so that you can know if that happens to you, what's going to ha- what the next steps are going to be. And you don't have to worry. 
Yeah, and we, you know, there's endless what ifs and scenarios that I could come up with, but <laughs> under what you just said there, you know, if if you're a, a family farming unit, you're living together. If you went into isolation, you'd still be living together. If, if somebody feels sick, is there really any sort of a need to isolate? You aren't aren't you sort of already isolating on the farm, not being exposed to external members of a team? That's been a question that's come up quite a bit, and. Uh, you know, I'm not an expert in the, that side of things, but it would seem common sense that if you don't have uh, contact with anyone else other than who's living on your farm or, as some people say, kind of living in your bubble of your home um, and you feel fine that you could work your land because you're not leaving your land, you're not leaving your house, you're not exposing others outside of who's already in your um, you know, living space basically. Um, but I think again, I'm not necessarily an expert in that area, It, but it does seem like common sense if no one else is being exposed and you're not changing who you have contact with on a, while you're doing those uh, activities. One of the things unique in agriculture is that we do have people of older generations that do help out during seeding, planting, harvest time. It's one of the, the issues here is that people that are older are more susceptible to the, the some of the big downside risks of COVID-19. We, we do need to be making sure we're taking extra care of those people over the age of 70 that may be helping out on the farm because they are the most at risk here. Absolutely. And I mean, this might be the time, uh, the season that they take off <laughs> and you don't lean on them as much for help. And I know that can be uh, super difficult, especially um, for those people that uh, this is what they've done all their lives and, you know, telling them that they need to stay home this year um, might not go over that well, that's for sure. Um, but like I was saying earlier, this is not the time to be, you know, muscling through things or, or you know, ignoring um, the warnings. It is the time to be super safe and super cautious on um, everything. And that may include you know, having the older older generations or the older workers not participate in this uh, in this spring season. Farmers are are trying to do the best they can to be safe on the farm. One of those safety factors or safety tactics is to make sure you're wearing proper safety equipment. Right now, there is a you know a real call and a shortage of PPE equipment. Some of that equipment we actually do use on the farm. How do we manage through this in terms of trying to stay safe, but also maybe not having an adequate supply of some of the safety equipment? Yeah, that's uh, definitely something that is difficult. And uh, there's a number of operations that are already using PPE that would is in short supply. Um, so, you know, taking a look at how you can manage that supply to the best of your ability. Um, you know, if there's alternatives to that PPE, taking a look at that, what that might be. Um, you know, you want to make sure that you are continuing to operate in the safest environment as possible. Um, so, you know, along with that, uh, that planning of if you're short of workers, you do need to also take a look at the bigger picture and make sure that the workers you have are be able to access um, what they need to stay safe um, on the farm as well. Jen, do you have any other pieces of advice or key notes that you think are critical for our audience here at Mind Your Farm Business to, to listen to? Um, well, I think, you know, there's lots of information out there about hand washing and uh, physical distancing and lots of different things coming out as ways to do that while you're still getting the work done on the farm. Um, one thing that we haven't talked about is making sure that you're thinking about not only uh, your own mental health, but the mental health of your workers. This is a very stressful time for people. And uh, there's a lot of worry um, about pretty much everything as far as your own health, your financial stability, um, access to workers, your the workers wanting job security. You know, you name it, there's things to be worried about. So mental health is always a very important thing to be thinking about. But this at this point, uh, you know, it's really important to take that extra step and uh, support your workers and yourself and make sure that everybody's doing okay. Jen, thank you very much for joining us here on the Mind Your Farm Business Podcast. Thank you for having me. With some effort, we can clearly get the work done on the farm and still do our best to protect ourselves and farm businesses from further spread of the virus. 
Work sites are not immune to COVID-19, as we have all seen the impact the virus has had on the livestock packing industry. If you need more information on this topic, you can contact the Canadian Agricultural Human Resource Council at www.cahrc-ccrha.ca. I hope you've enjoyed today's discussion. If you have any feedback, please email me at shaney at realagriculture.com or call the Real Ag Lister line. The number is 855-776-6147. I'd love to hear your stories or comments on how you are managing through the COVID-19 social distancing restrictions on your farm. You can find more episodes of Mind Your Farm Business at mindyourfarmbusiness.com. Also on iTunes. Thanks to RBC Royal Bank. And until next time, keep on minding your farm business.